We're all tied up here as Team Liquid and Fnatic go at it right now. We're going into game number three, and it's one to one. And honestly, Caldor, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm absolutely happy. We have our big three in Europe back. There's no doubt about it, and it is it's it's fantastic to see this. We were all doubting Liquid coming back. Mm -hmm. Everybody was saying, can they really? connect to Fnatic, to uh, Dignitas. We had so many teams in scrim at the mid-season brawl with them. A few of the American teams, so that's the scrim we were saying, like, Liquid doesn't really look all that strong. And at that point, they might have still tried to find their stride here, but now they are definitely back to business, and they are currently taking games off Fnatic. We're going to find out who wins the series, but already it's an impressive feat. Well, let's find out which battleground we're going to for game number three to see if Team Liquid can gain that advantage and win uh, out over Fnatic. Team Liquid getting the choice here, and we're going to one of their specials, Towers of Doom. Do you smell that? What's that? There's a Vikings band. Apparently that has a smell. What's the smell like? Sweaty Viking? Like, what does that smell? Explain it to me, Kalidor. I'm not going to explain that. <laughs> You're not going to get it. it. Smells like sweaty beards. No, I got yeah, the joke. Sweaty beards. It's, yeah, it's good. You sweaty beards. You have one. And mine definitely <laughs> is sweaty all the time. Thank you, Kalidor. So, Towers of Doom, a Team Liquid special because of weird. the Vikings. I always make it weird, man. That's yeah. what I do, man. <laughs> It wouldn't be a tricking Kalidor cast <laughs> if we'd have something <laughs> awkward happen in a best of five series. Let's be real. Good point. So we are definitely looking towards the Vikings. If you haven't really watched too much of Team Liquid's plays, they really love to run Vikings on this battleground. So Fnatic, they are thinking about it. And first of all, they ban out Illidan. So one of the reasons they ban out Illidan is, first of all, he really carried a lot in the last game, but it's also extremely important since the pseudo-global ability with the hunt of Illidan just gets emphasized on Towers of Doom. But having the Vikings on this map, that's something that Team Liquid did a lot in the past. Fnatic, by the way, has done that too. Liquid is just way more known for it, so Fnatic definitely at least considers it. I am curious to see how we're going to have that whole top lane, middle lane soak occurrence happen here. Are we going to have the Lurk in the mix? Are we going to have the Dahaka? That Royal Focus build on this battleground in particular feels like you're cheating. You're literally rotating between the top and the middle, clearing out wades, and your entire team could be in that four-man rotation just destroying yeah. bottom lane. The one thing is, it only feels like cheating if your team understands what you're doing. So guys, if you ever play a game where you have a Leoric that goes Royal Focus, chances are he wants to soak two lanes, so group us four and get value elsewhere on the map, And uh, if he does it. So always keep that in mind. Royal Focus is a very good indicator that Le your Leoric was just to soak two lanes and give the rest of the team an opportunity to make plays as four, either push a lane or set up games. Yes, please don't tell him to go soak the bottom lane on Blackheart's Bay after he's already gone for the build that may have happened to me, and I am not salty about it at all. Genji has been banned out here from Team Liquid, and Dahaka will be the first pickup for Fnatic. There okay. he is. So why is Dahaka currently a pretty cool choice? The reason is really simple. First he's a dinosaur. of all, that's true. Yes. That's true. He is also a Transformer dinosaur, mm. and as much as the movies are getting worse and worse and worse, it's still a cool concept. It is a cool concept. So, coming back to the Dehaka pick, though. <laughs> um, first of all, the global on this map is, of course, fantastic. We also know that Wubi excels on Dehaka. But if you play against a team like Fnatic, and you know they love to play the Vikings, Dehaka threatens them a bit more. So, Liquid can still play the Vikings. They could still get a lot of value out of them if they decide to do it. But at the same time, Fnatic says, we are aware of that threat, and the Haka would be one of the tools that we need to commit to in order to just mitigate that threat and make sure that we ourselves get sight soaked so that the Viking is not completely getting past us. And Team Liquid answers back with an Abathur and a Nubrak pickup. Abathur a bit safer than a Vikings pickup. You can usually yep. move into a hyper carry at some point, some melee, but you also get that soak benefit that you want to have against the Haka. Now we had the old school special played by Team Liquid where they ran Abathur and the Vikings. So that could happen, but I would say that the chances we're going to see a Vikings play by Team Liquid have now significantly been reduced. They're going into Abatha instead. And of course, now the question once again, who's going to be the copy target? So Greymane is still a very good option for them. There's a few heroes floating around. Eric the Swift, if you do go with Vikings. Double Eric. Mm -hmm, yeah, we saw it at the mid-season brawl. That actually happened yeah. in the, uh, the the off matches. It Double Eric, best Eric. Devastating, man. Uh, gosh, I was, I'm just thinking about that now. Abathur and Vikings. Was that on like Sky Temple? Yes. Okay, yeah. So I'm thinking that it could work on Sky Temple and maybe Warhead Junction. Yeah, that was really old school what they did. That was back in the days with the Liquid running uh, with the Spanish Armada having mm. Vortex and Lucifer on there. 
But you can still do that. The question, of course, is what is Abathur going to copy here? And Fnatic can pick Greyman for themselves. Tracer already taken away. So this is actually really cool. Tracer is a hero that Fnatic played on this map a lot. Uh, there's a lot of space to work with. It's also a potential copy target taken away from Abathur. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Greyman ban. Greyman ban makes sense for me here. Uh, get rid of him and continue to move forward. Tracer and Uther, though, that's so interesting to me. Instead of Tracer Tassadar, is it really Uther that much more powerful that you even go over the known strategy of Tracer and Tass? I think they just want to take it I, away from I, Liquid. I guess it's, it's, a, it's a ban question because the Greyman ban, I would expect it from Fnatic. Mm -hmm. So if you pick Uther, if you don't pick Uther now, then your opponent gets either yeah Greyman or Uther. That's true. So maybe that was just the thought process here, just deny it to them. And I mean, you can with Uther also do a good job with Tracer. The mm -hmm. Divine Shield to just save her. We could still see a Tassa later on if they want to fully commit to it. So Liquid has to think about the ban here, which they do. They ban him out for exactly that reason. So Fnatic thinking about what they want to move into. The Greyman ban is usually a standard, especially with Abther being on the field already. So anyone else that immediately jumps out for you with the mix-up that we wouldn't be looking into? Do you move into a Vala ban maybe and just give them the Greymane? That way they don't get Ariel and Vala? Yeah, I don't, I'm not quite sure about that. For me, it's really about what does Abathur get his most value from. Mm -hmm. And with the setup that we have, I, I mean, there's several tanks that you can play with Abathur that benefit from him highly and where you can either copy or simply say if through the symbiote you get enough. Malthiel is actually a really good point. I didn't even think about that. He's allowed for the first time this uh, this weekend, so that slipped my mind. Malthiel can be quite the nuisance if he has an Abathur hat on top of him, and then you can uh, copy one of the ranged heroes and later on, so that is actually not too bad. How does he do against a Haka? I feel like this is a matchup that Malthiel could actually possibly win. I guess it's a Dehaka. He wins. He wins straight up? Yeah. Well, so far I've seen, I think, three times Malthiel go up against the Dehaka, and Malthiel won most of these. So it's it's really tricky. The longer it goes, if it's just a bit of poking happening at the start, then Dehaka finds himself into such a passive spot that he can never really engage into him. So if Malthiel plays it right, he at least trades evenly if he doesn't slightly win it. Awesome. Okay, well, Malthiel taken out, so the Haka can be effective in his lane to keep up with the rotations. Team Liquid looking to move into their damage and probably the support around this mix up. What would they like to grab here? The Oriole and the Vala is up and available for Nurok and crew. There's also the Greymane still floating out, which is great for that Abathur. Greymane, Leori could be played for the solo lane. Uh, we have Sonya, let's not forget about her. Mm -hmm. She would be good in the solo lane and would really benefit from Abathur as well. <laughs> I mean, my heart still hopes for uh, for Vikings play just because I love Hazops on Vikings and Liquid has done that in the past. I'm just not sure if they're willing to commit it to it on top of the Abathur. Yeah, especially with Tracer and the Hawk on the field, there it is. Yeah, it feels like you, get, you just lose too much, you don't get any value out of there. So uh, I would be surprised, but you would we just pick it and be like, maybe this works. And you just go in and completely get shut down as Tracer yeah. destroys Vikings. Yeah, she does. Pretty much. But then again, has Orbs has gotten so much value on a lot of maps with Vikings where we looked at the draft and said, how is this going to work out for them? Yeah. So yeah, for now, it's Oriel together with Abatha though, for Vala. So we could see a bit of a focus on the attack speed. Keep in mind, this is a map where Abatha's build could change and mm -hmm. cater more towards slowing down rotations by placing toxic nests everywhere. So this could be a toxic nest focus and I would, I'm not sure if he goes full, full in on it, but I wouldn't be surprised to see at least one or two nest talents being picked up just to slow rotations down, maybe give you the extra seconds so that you can channel through an altar. Yeah, especially the chokes on the uh, middle lane right below it. So there's a Graving picked up here for Fnatic. We're waiting on one last hero. What is Fnatic going to move into to really help out with this Tracer composition? It's going to be the Varian, full on engage here, be able to lock down a target, and against Team Liquid. Are you thinking maybe we move into a second support just so you have that cleanse available? Maybe a Rhaegar? But another support with this, you have Abatha already, which is a bit of a pseudo support depending on how you play him. Yeah. And you have Oriel. If you get another support right now, I think you leave yourself way too weak at the front line. I think if you damage. get anyone besides Rhaegar, you totally do. I think Rhaegar gives you Merc Clear as well. You get the cleanse available, you keep a Nubarak alive. I don't mind it too much there. I'm just afraid of the cooldown trades because yeah. you have the 16 second cooldown on Taunt, 30 seconds on the Curse Bullet, and those two just trade really well into any kind of 
Aegis, Ancestral, so I'm not sure if that's really the answer here. But then again, the cleanse would be nice, but we're talking about the same problem. 60 seconds on this one. What about Zarya? We haven't seen Zarya in forever. That's actually true. They go for the Rhaegar. Alright, I'm really interested to see how they're gonna get out of their cooldown trades here, because that's the one thing I'm really worried about. They have to put down Tracer, I think, in a fight pretty quickly, it feels like, or Grammy. You get one of those two down, you're good to go. But yes, cooldown trades are going to be really ineffective for them. You're right, the taunt in into the cursed bullet, usually something you can pull out every 20 to 30 seconds, it'll be in a good spot from there. Whereas on the other side, you do have sustain, but can you actually win out a team fight if all gets locked out? I mean, Liquid really commits to the double supports. Yeah. We've seen this in this series, we've seen it last weekend. They really enjoy these compositions where they have the double support and enable someone, and it works out very, very well for them. Just in this particular setup, I'm personally extremely interested to see how they're going for these trades. Since I said, we have very low cooldowns on the heroic abilities that are important for the composition for Fnatic, and a higher cooldowns, much higher cooldowns, on the side of Liquid. And once they lose a hero, they are in a lot of trouble. And if you just go in, we have the variant that goes for the aggression, the Grey Main jumps in, and then on top of that, Tracer just chases the target down in the end. Seems like a bit rough for Liquid, but we all know that double support is strong, so it might work out. Well, we'll see who can pull out ahead here as we're going to game number three with both of our teams one to one right now. Will it be Varian shutting down Vala, or can Vala answer back against the Tracer composition? Here we go, Towers of Doom. Tricks are asking who's going to pull out ahead here, and I think it's going to be Abatha. We have now to the left side, though, a Fnatic going up against Team Liquid. The series is tied. As we go into game number three, we have Vubi on the Haka, Breeze on Varian, Quatnix on Greymane, Uther played by Smexy, and Tracer controlled in this game by Shrimpy. On the right side, in the red, Team Liquid. We're going to have Splendor playing the Oriole. Nurok will be on Vala. Hasuobs will be on Abathur. Blumby playing a new Barak. And Darkmok, interestingly enough, will be on the Rhaegar. They believe so much in the Vala here for Nurok that Darkmok is actually playing support. This is, it comes down to overlap in hero pools again, and in certain games they do exactly that. Oh, so keep in mind that now, for example, Abatha not having the Illidan committed to the level 1 talent with a cooldown reduction and the extended range on the spike burst, uh, the pressurized glance here. So this comes down to exactly what we said earlier. You have an Illidan, you don't need the talent since he's going to be close to the target anyways and he will be able to chase it down. You don't have the Illidan, then you adapt, your, you adapt the build with Abatha. And speaking about Avatar, he's been controlling two lanes, it looks like, and still be something in the top lane passively with his body while dealing the mid lane. And Team Liquid has committed to this four man rotation. Neurox, Splendor, Blumby, and Rhaegar there to help out. They'll be moving in between the middle and the bottom lane. And looking into the fights, do you think this is a multi shot build? I think it's a multi shot build right away against the composition here. You got Grammy, multiple melee, set the back line. You also get the trade on uh, Tracer pretty well. It should be. We have seen. I've seen in a few scrims when they're starting from some liquid auto attack builds, but it's very, very rare and it's usually something that's reserved for maps like Battlefield of Eternity, Tomb of Spider Queen, smaller maps where you are guaranteed that you have a lot of long and drawn out fights. With this setup, I wouldn't really expect it. Maybe they throw a bit of a curveball, but this should still be punishment, especially since you also want early game value and you only get that if you go into punishment. Well, Mercs are being grabbed here, as we're gonna have the right side grabbed by Team Liquid. Fnatic was looking at their left side, but Varian just sitting there for defense while Team Liquid will start to spread on out. And now it's all about the Abathur effect. How does he utilize his body here in the three spawn phase here for Alters? Uh, well, for now we have uh, Fnatic with a bit of a uh, focus at the bot lane, but they have their global up at the top, so they can always rotate down behind Oriel if they want to commit to it, but Tracer is also now zoned, nice. That should just barely give them that altar, and then Ruby can move back down if he wants to. For now, though, Quartnix is finding it a little bit difficult to stay alive here, and the altar has already been channeled by Liquid, but thanks to Fnatic's setup up the top lane, they cannot get the second one. Nice job there. Tracer helps get in the top right. They did have one mine there to slow it down, but it was picked up by Dahaka. Nice teamwork by Fnatic. And that'll award them four extra shots, while Dahaka will defend with that top lane and Tracer in the middle. Team Liquid is 
pushing in aggressively as they can move in as much as they can, working on those auto attacks. I like that Rhaegar was the one that's rotating between the middle and the bottom now. He has the best wave clear out of the uh, members beside Vala, and allows him to do it safely, too. Him picking up uh, the Lightning Bond and such allows for him to help clear out these mercenary camps, and he can just group up with his team at any point. I really like how Fnatic, uh, sorry, how Liquid approaches this right now, but Nurok might wow. fall if they're not careful. The heal comes through, but Rhaegar is isolated and eliminated. Will be even aiming for Aureol, does not get the kill. But overall, Fnatic is starting. I don't want to say they are struggling here since they just won that fight quite handily, but they are a bit behind Team Liquid when it comes to controlling the map. Since Liquid is really aiming to pick up the mercenary camps, and they are pushing heavily towards walls overall with the help of Vala giving the hope to Aureol so that Aureol can just continuously heal out there. So that's actually well done. Blumi here, for example, always spawning the beetles, draining shots from the towers, and then making sure that Vala has an easier time dropping a tower or two. Yeah, um, Fnatic getting that pick there, very helpful though in terms of slowing down that rotation. Level 10 here when they get that variant taunt, really spikes for them. They're able to go in for those fights. So if they can play around the Pulse Bomb and the Brush Tucker here in the early game and get a pick or two, Fnatic's in a pretty good spot. And Team Liquid, appropriately for their composition, as you were mentioning, are pushing in really well. So we'll see them continue to do that. Next Alter Phase should be one that Fnatic can fight with if it's one altar phase. However, if it's two, I expect them to trade out with Team Liquid here because a straight up fight against an Ariel Vala is really difficult to do, especially with a Rhaegar on top. Yeah, will be again, by the way, moving in here, trying to get a quick lockdown, but is the Tame and Strike back? And that just put, that just simply puts an end to Fnatic's approach here. Mm. It looked as really promising for Fnatic, but didn't really work out as intended. So now they have to send uh, Dehaka back onto the lanes to simply get the soak here. But Team Liquid and tries to engage into Quatnix. Abatha helps out here. Four versus four. Plus, of course, Abatha. Dehaka in the meantime is setting up a side zone, so trying to get the Tong in. Could do it now. Nurok with the Pulse Bomb comes in. Nurok's getting low here. Abathur help is helping him with the Rhaegar and Splendor coming in there, keeping the heals up just enough. But Wabi lands the dragon. Nurok will fall. He held it back for so long. That was actually really well done. Dartmoor also in a bit of trouble. There's another quick drag, but this is misses. But the kill against Vala was exactly what they needed. And Dehaka is already back to the top lane, making sure that he gets the experience against Abathur. Fnatic actually ahead here in terms of core control. 36 to 28 as Team Liquid is falling in health. Pulse Bomb comes out. Breeze on the flank here. Body Bucket Lumbi. Dark Mock and Splinter will put out enough heals though to keep him up. Things are absolutely crazy. This is the power of the double support. And you can argue that Liquid is playing it not even with the double support. This is more two and a half since Abathur, of course, is going to help you with a sustain as well in these fights. Overall, Liquid is behind in points on the core, but both of the teams are starting to head into level 10, and once that's hit, the game is going to change. That it will. So far, Team Liquid continues to control where they can. They're even looking like they might flank onto Haka. Rhaegar charging in here without a bush until he gets to this boss area. Wubby's going to be in a bit of a hard spot. Finally getting out, and Darkmok will be unable to chase there. Wubby. On to Haka, just too quick when you get in those bushes. Yeah, that extra movement speed is absolutely fantastic for him. Shrimpy also chunked down really hard at that engage, moves quickly out of it, but this is really just both teams waiting for their level 10 and making sure that they get uh, close to the next altar. Good stuns the entire time already from Splendor. His sustainment strikes are really on point. Every time the Haka comes out of a brush, there's a detainment strike waiting for him. When he sees a chance to get a stun in, we have Aureal in position. Splendor definitely doing this extremely well. It gets harder for them at 10, though, because you want to stop the drag, but you also want to stop the variant from charging in. You want to try and land yeah. him when he goes in for the charge. And now you have two targets on only one ribbon to stop them. Team Liquid will have to have really solid positioning when that comes up to fruition at level 10, which is now here. Fnatic hits it before them. 10 will hit for Team Liquid as well. So we have a fight over two ultras, one to the top left, one to the top right. Now, this is usually a split. But Liquid is already invading the left side, and they have Rhaegar in position to channel their own. So we are going to see that fight of the altar here. Raymond is now making his way in. Divine Shield. Oh, the Haka in trouble, and he gets the burrow. The stuns are in, but they are not locked up properly to get him the damage. But this is the Nubrak uh, web cocoon coming out, and uh, therefore nobody could move in for a Divine Shield. Well played, the Haka down. Shrimpy trying to interrupt here, moves out again, but overall Liquid should be guaranteed to have this one. 
Perfect wrap there from Lumby to keep Uther from bringing out the Divine Shield now. Dehaka will be up in three seconds. Can Brushok in and fight this? What Fnatic is bullied away as Nero with his multi shots. Three finally coming out has been enough to break down the opponent to get them low on health. Really well done by Team Liquid. They get both the altars and now we have 28 points on both cores. So it's all about the attempt to really burst one of these targets down. It was a problem that the Haka was isolated here. If Fnatic moves in as five or just starts to coordinate, they're a bit better at the engagement, they might be able to break this team fight. But for now, we are seeing Team Liquid gain more and more momentum on the map, starting to take the camps again. And they've been controlling those for a long time. They're looking much more confident here too at the level 10 once the Ultimate Evolution came available. They're getting more aggressive. And I thought the early game was pretty strong in terms of control, but right now they are looking very bold. Also interesting uh, again to see that we have Vala not going for straight that which is much better to give Oriel hope, but going up against the taunt and also the Dehaka interrupt, and Uther of course on top of this too. Basically Vala just said, okay listen guys, I need to have the stun available. First of all, it helps me to disengage when they want to go for me. We can also use it to as a follow-up for the Tame and Strike stun and for Cocoon. And the strafe would probably not have really done anything for them here in the long run. Oh, big burst here comes out. Ages and from Splendor. Rain of Vengeance being dropped, and Dark Mox getting low on health. He's getting healed too. He finally does fall, but Nurok is answering back, putting Quacknix low on health. Multi shot comes out. Quack barely out of the fight, but they'll be able to get a pickup. Yeah, they are barely getting out of this, but Quack, does he have the cooldown on the fountain? Can he simply tap? Doesn't look like it, but that's a really good drag against Vala. Once again, the stun coming in. The damage just wasn't there, though. Another 10 seconds until we see the altars online, and by the time, Rega will be back. Rengar will be back now as he just now spawns. Five seconds for the altars activate. One in the middle, one to the very far south. Quacknix also topped off in health, so we'll have a full five on five. But the big story is, Heroics were used in the last fight. Divine Shield not up for 45 seconds. Aegis here in 15, and the Aegis is not up in time, and nice. Blumby is taken out, and here comes Wubby with that tongue. Ariel is low, Abatha helping out, and once again, the zoning of Norok as he uses the Reign of Vengeance, but Liquid is down a hero, and without their tank, they just can't make the play. Both altars about to be taken by Fnatic. Shots are fired, and we have experience taken on the lanes again as Fnatic takes their level 13 talents slightly before Team Liquid. Wubby is just dragging everyone from Team Liquid through the mud here. He keeps getting pick after pick after pick with the team, which is making it much easier for Fnatic to get these lockdowns and go in for the fights. And I love the seven talent feeding Frenzy. It allows him to continue to get those drags up. Bringing out those auto attacks reduces the cooldown by two seconds. And Wubby continues to be there. Watch out for Splendor, man, as he's the one that's been getting hit on the right side. He just doesn't have his team of strikes has been controlling that variant. Yeah, it shouldn't be. He was actually smelling that something was a bit fishy here, so he is not caught off guard by this. Didn't see anyone Freeze. on the minimap, and then you always have to assume that something is going to be set up to take you down. Level 13, any moment for Liquid. We have four kills against one in favor of Fnatic, 28 points on the core against 20. So a uh, pretty decent lead here for Fnatic, but this isn't over by a long shot. You could tell earlier in the team fight how difficult it was for Fnatic to get that initial kill. Yeah, Fnatic crushing right now, but remember this is Team Liquid on Towers of Doom, and they are the monster of comebacks, it seems like, on this battleground. We saw one last week against Stigmatos, and oh it's God, only 28 to 20. Exactly, you can never count Team Liquid out until you get the final shot. So watch for them to continue to control here as they tie up in talents 14 to 13 and continue to push in this bottom they're looking to finally break that fort yeah the squad nick split in trouble but so far he's still fine but you mentioned that game against dignitas on this map and guys if you haven't watched it make sure that you go to youtube check the video out check the vote out it was absolutely insane never count them out here comes the taunt. Nurok moves back immediately. Good disengage by Team Liquid. But again, it's a battle of the cooldowns here. And right now, we're going to see just another 20 seconds until that Cursed Bullet is back. Taunt is already back online. And this is the fifth altar face on the map, and therefore, it's a triple. Cursed Bullet's up in nine seconds, too, which means Fnatic will have that entire combo available. Team Liquid had to use Cleanse, and they also burned down their wells as Nurok took that damage, so they have to be careful here. Breeze goes in. Ancestor Killing to counter the engage. Can Splinter get through? Reign of Vengeance will keep him alive. Splinter coming out. Wubby low on health. Essence being popping. Wubby's in Kate chasing. They're going in once again. Shrimp in the back line already trying to get the damage in, but here comes the Aegis. Splendor is still falling. Hazorfs on the Rhaegar copy is isolated and about to fall here as well. 
well, but Fnatic is disengaging. They're happy to wait this out a bit longer. They're having a great position here around the altar at the bottom, and this could be a triple altar. Abatha, Abatha is in a lot of trouble since Whoopi moved in, and ha Hazard's gonna fall. And the worm is down. Fnatic is grabbing oh. this altar in the top right. Tracer's in the top left for the moment. Whoopi continue to delay, especially with Uther on the way and Breeze. And they can move in to grab three altars of space. There's a delay there from Breeze. Cleanse is they not have to up go. here yet, and Rhaegar is going to be careful. They have to move back. Yes, no way. Shouldn't have been there that long. Uh, okay, so they have four here again, but the altar has been channeled. Abatha gambled. Hazoops really gambled. He said, okay, he hasn't. Has he used his Z? Does anybody know if he tunneled in? And at that point, he just said, okay, I'm going to risk it. So he goes top. We see Tracer already moving that direction. But then the Haka simply says, wait, there's a worm waiting for me. All right, I got this. Goes in, gets the drag and the kill. Tracer would have finished it off too. That was great for Fnatic. Three orders taken. It's fantastic. Doesn't get any better than that. It does it. 28 to 8 right now for Fnatic. They are heavily in the lead, and Team Liquid is starting to fight from behind. 16 to 14, too. They're behind in talents as well. Fnatic just so far ahead at the moment, keeping up with the pressure, getting the mercenaries on the left side. Team Liquid's gonna have to dig deep here and find some way to lock down a target and take him out. Yeah, the double support for Liquid not working out so far in this game. They're down in talent, and that's rough. I mean, how do you beat Dahaka and Varian? Varian with the protect build, and then Dahaka with the essence and the uh, adaptation? It, it's it's really tricky. The problem is how do you get the damage out? If they have enough disables, they can make something work. Great use of the Aegis here, mitigating the damage. Bloombi would have maybe not died, but why risk it here? You can't really allow Fnatic to gain more momentum because Fnatic is clearly trying to get one of the Bell Towers. I feel like you need Mana Core at 16. You have to get rid of this Sahaka. You have to get rid of this variant some way. You can't get past that front line. It's way too robust. Frostshock could work on Greyman in particular, but if Tracer gets hit by it, she's going to go ahead and blink away. Uther can give Divine shield. We'll have to see if Team Liquid goes for that route when they get 16. But then again, Fnatic is really low in these team fights every time. Yeah. So if you will go into the 16 as Vala and you pick up the Frost Shot, if you slow Tracer down, if you slow Greymane down, and you just put that bit of additional damage onto them, you might get the kill. And once Fnatic is one or two heroes short, you are just snowballing the fight from there. I think it really comes down also to the engagement that Liquid can set up with Cocoon. They did it perfectly in a few scenarios. Can they do that again? But Bloombi has become a really tough, a real big target. And that was an absolutely amazing engage by Fnatic, getting the kill against Rhaegar and forcing Liquid back once Wubby more. is destroying right now. A second tongue hitting Splendor, and he's going to get blown up. Cocoon comes out, but it's too late as Fnatic takes out both the supports of Team Liquid. Wubi on Dehaka is absolutely insane. The win ratio they have with him is out of this world, and it just showed again. They went for an Ubrak. Rega used the Ancestral, had to move in, and then all of a sudden, Wubi sees the position, goes and takes him down. They get the altar, and that's four points. If they get the boss here, and they're likely to do so, then this is over. Team Liquid has to react, but they only have two heroes. Bloombi is diving in. He's diving deep, but he's falling. And this is Fnatic sealing the deal and taking the victory on map number three, winning it here on Towers of Doom. Fnatic taking a lead in the series, two to one of their opponents. They are one game away from earning the entire victory in this best of five series, but they looked much more collected there in that game in Towers of Doom. Their lockdown potential with the Varian and the Greymane, you mentioned it, being able to blow up a target and just use cooldowns to their advantage was really on display. I feel we had a few get fights in the mid game where you could really tell that Fnatic was just on the edge of losing the battle. And they were in the end able to get a kill and took it from there. If they lose those fights, I think Team Liquid can build the momentum sure. by taking down Bell Towers, controlling the mercenaries even more to push Fnatic into a very awkward spot. But with Fnatic winning the mid game fights, they started to set themselves apart a little bit. And once they had the extra talent, it was just basically impossible for Team Liquid to really win one of these fights. And, uh, I mean, the setups worked so well for Fnatic. I mean, you have to give kudos to Wubby. He yeah. was playing completely on point in this game. Every single tongue he went in for did land on a support, which is important. There was a moment where we had a fight that lasted about 40 seconds in late, and there was three tongues connected there, which was three different heroics yeah. being used for saving. Ancestor healing, ages, even Reign of Vengeance to save Argo at the point. And it got to a situation to where they used everything they could to survive, then eventually another tongue finished that entire team fight as he started to really domino effect that entire fight. So Wubby Man, you're killing it on Dahaka. 
it was definitely a battle of the cooldowns, not only heroics, but also the tongue, as you said. So you have tools, like you have your cleanse, you have your Aegis, you have the detainment strike, but at some point you're just running out of tools since most of them have a pretty high cooldown. So we have also a fight that we can show you again about the last team fight to give you a bit of an idea how this planned out. But this is where, where Blumby is the target. Keep Blumby in mind and look for Darkmog in the positioning that we have here on his Vega. So here's the fight starting up. They're trying to burst him out. And Wubi is already looking for Rega. He even tries to get Rega before he gets the Ancestral out, but that wasn't the case. And as one, Fnatic shifts the target immediately. And as Rega falls, this is the end of the team fight. They don't have Rega anymore. Hazorbs is there on the copy, but that's the second tongue. You've been talking about it. It's beautiful. Oreo couldn't even drop ages. That's how quick that fight happened there. And the blow up that came out from Fnatic. And that was an important alter, obviously. It knocked them down to four points. They followed up and went to the boss, and that was going to be a game over. But you got to be careful around Wubby, apparently, man, because he is there to land those tongues when he can. There's a reason they first picked the Hawkeye on the map. Yeah, that's on full display.